all right all right hey everybody can we get your cameras on if you're going to be here let's let's turn those cameras on so we can see your pretty faces Hello, on. my camera's not working or i don't have access it says we can't uh because the host won't allow it okay um, there you go guys turn on your cameras let's get it all right all right all right all right what's going on all you beautiful closers what's up oh what's up what's up yo got, yo yo everybody everybody's everybody's getting their cameras on getting ready to roll uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir all right awesome awesome well guys we're uh we're gonna get started here uh yeah. just one minute we're gonna make sure that you know we let a few last people kind of trickle in but i know uh i know sam sammy you're here right Yes, sir. Excited to rock and roll. Hope everybody is having a great day today. Super, super excited for this mastermind and great to see all of you. Welcome, everyone. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to see you, Sammy. Hey, so guys, we have a uh, a real treat for you guys today. He's a special guest. Sammy Backey uh, is in the house. Uh, he's a three-time Two Comma Club Award winner, uh, founder of We Clone You. Uh, where he actually helps business owners change their lives by by growing their businesses through systemization and processes and uh, ultimately getting them, you know, their time back and increasing their quality of life. You know, he he he's a life lover himself, um, you know, has a just has, has has always wanted to to, you know, live those finer things in life has to say and you know, he actually went out and made it happen. And, and oh, yeah, just real quick, guys, to let you guys know, he also uh, is self-proclaimed the 11th worst DJ in California. And, <laughs> you know, he's here to give you guys the fire today, man. This is Sammy. Sammy, I'm going to let you take it from here, my man. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Bobby. Really appreciate the great introduction. And thank you for having me on in this, this amazing group here. Thank you to Mike Barron for having me on as well. Super, super excited to kick things off. And uh, thank you for that great introduction here. What I'd really love to do in this presentation is give some of the most actionable and, and high level things that really served as a, a turning point for my business. From my understanding, we probably have uh, closers and, and business owners at all different stages of the game right here. So I really want to provide some of the most valuable things that I've personally, you know, stumbled upon myself and really kind of some of the most eye opening things that really kind of made that trend transition for me as I was actually talking to, to Bobby uh, before this this mastermind, you know, earlier on in this week, you know, when I I've, I've been a serial entrepreneur now for about um, eight years, you know, I'm the founder and CEO of, of We Clone You, which is my core business right now. I've won three, two comma club awards. So the last uh, four years have been a lot of abundance, a lot of success, and it's really been a phenomenal journey. But to be completely honest, when I first got started in business, when, when I was actually in, in high school, I thought that um, you know, just because I was I was smart and I had good work ethic, I was I was just going to be you know making a hundred thousand dollars a month within within a few months. But uh, truth be told, it ended up taking me you know quite a bit longer than than that. Even you know four years into my business journey, I was still making less than a uh, full time McDonald's employee would would be making. Um, but I was working a lot more than a full time McDonald's uh, employee at the same time. But at the same time, you know, never really never really gave up, always, always kept that fire. And then, you know, eventually, and a lot of the things I'm going to be sharing here were really big turning points for me to kind of get to those uh, really big months of, you know, 100k months, 250k months, win two comma club awards, um, you know, generate millions of dollars in sales, become a really good, you know, sales closer in the process as, as, as well. Um, and uh, I know we have a lot of closers here. So definitely want to share some actionable things there. That being said, would love to dive right in. I'm going to do a little bit about, you know, who I am. I covered a little bit about that already, a little bit of story and background, how this all uh, came about a couple of the big, you know, turning points and, and eye openers for me. And then from there, we're going to get into just actionable, valuable things from, you know, general business, you know, sales, some of the most important things I've learned marketing. And then if we have some time, would love to also share a little bit on the systems and the automations and the virtual assistants side of things, which is what we really help a lot of business owners with uh, now with We Clone You. Uh, that being said, what I what I wanted to name this, this presentation, it's a, it's a little bit funny, actually. I, I call it um, How to Get Rich Quick 
LOL, uh, the closest thing to it. Now, the reason why I, I, I call it that, one of uh, one, one, one quote that really stuck to me in business, I actually heard this from Jordan Belfort, but I think he quoted it from somebody else. He said, uh, there's no such thing as a get rich quick, but there's only one way to get rich, quick. And I like that a lot because at the end of the day, you know, we're all here to, you know, really experience exponential growth curves at some point in our journey. And, and, and the sooner, the better at the end of the day, so that we can really, you know, get to the fun part, really start enjoying business. Because when it, when it starts to work and you really hit that exponential growth curve um, and the machine is just spitting out the tokens, then it, it becomes a lot more fun than, you know, my first four years in the journey when it was really much more of a struggle. So hope that I can add a lot of value in regards to this, a little bit of story and background, how this came, how this came about. And then I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll get into some actionable value items. And then at the end of this, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of Q and a as well. Um, I started out in, in business when I was about, um, you know, late 16, 17, years old. And I, I always knew I wanted to get into business. I, I always knew, you know, nine to five job probably wasn't going to be for me. Um, but, you know, I, I always kind of like dragged my, my, my feet on it, getting started. So the catalyst for me was I actually, you know, and ended up uh, crashing my my car that, that my parents gave to me. And, uh, you know, just like a few weeks after I got it, or maybe like a month after I got it. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a job or anything. So they had to, you know, pay for it. And, you know, I felt bad about that. So that actually kind of gave me just enough like motivation or inspiration. It just kind of served as the catalyst for me to go ahead. I, I ended up getting a job at a local restaurant. That was a journey in and of itself. I thought you just kind of walk in, apply and you get a job. But even as a, at a starting position at a restaurant, I had to apply to like 20 different places, interview at all these places, finally got a job there. Um, and, you know, was making minimum wage plus plus a, a little bit of tips here and there as, as a busser, which is which can be really hard work at a uh, at a restaurant. And um, what I did, you know, a lot a lot of my friends, you know, they also worked at the same restaurant as me and they would, you know, save up their money and they would use it to, you know, mod out their cars or buy X, Y, Z. Uh, me, pretty much every single dollar that I didn't spend on like food or, you know, like just like general lifestyle, I would, uh, it would go into books, it would go into courses, it would go into, you know, mentorships, coaching. And so I was always broke, even working a job because I would always invest into the things and always learn as much as I could. And that really served as a, as, as my education at the end of the day. Um, even though I, I, I ended up dropping out of college, my, my second year, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, all of those books, all of those coachings, all of those mentors, all of those high ticket and low ticket programs and everything in between and YouTube videos and free resources, those really served to really kind of, you know, cultivate, uh, the skill sets that, that ultimately ended up, uh, you know, making a really, really big change inside of my life. Now, um, few things is, you know, like I said earlier on, you know, first four years were really kind of a, a big struggle. And there were a couple of, of big turning points there that, uh, that, that really kind of opened my eyes. And between these, these two turning points, I, I really saw a big, big difference just in my perspectives first, you know, internally. And then once my inside world changed, then, uh, I really saw the difference on, uh, on the outside. And, and the first real turning point that I'd like to share here, and this was, um, while I was in, while I was in college, you know, I was making, uh, I was running kind of like a, a, uh, a marketing agency at the time and uh, was, you know, closing low ticket retainers and also servicing the clients myself. So it was a lot of work because I would uh, be cold calling and making video pitches and sending those out and following up with a bunch of people. And it was all very, very cold leads uh, in a very saturated uh, marketing niche where a lot of people have been burned before. So it was very difficult. Uh, and plus back then I didn't have the sales skills that I had now. So uh, that was difficult. And then once you get a client, I was also the one delivering for the client. So I was kind of handling all aspects of the business as a solo entrepreneur. So it was very difficult to pass a few thousand dollars a month. And, and sometimes I would maybe hit like, you know, $5,000 a month. Um, but then I might lose a client, then it's back down to three. And then it would just kind of be like a little, a little bit frustrating after, you know, putting in all that work. And I'm like, how did I just end up in the same place I was six months ago? And um, so that would happen, that that happened quite a bit. And, uh, you know, even as a, as a college student, you know, making two, three, you know, four or 5,000 a month wasn't too bad, you know, running a business after business expenses, after paying for, you know, food and kind of things like that. I was also still in a uh, perpetual state of, of being broke, but I had this one really big opportunity that one time fell inside of my lap that could have been like the difference between being in that broke stage and just instantly becoming uh, super, super abundant. 
uh, which was this uh, crazy deal, actually, completely un un unrelated to anything that I was doing at the time. But it actually had to do with uh, I lived in California and this was, you know, all around the uh, legalization of, of marijuana and everything of that sort. And I was I was working on, on brokering this really big deal, actually, uh, for selling about um, a, a thousand pounds of, of legal trim per day, which the commission on that between me and my few other partners would have been three hundred thousand dollars a month each guaranteed for the next uh three years or something of that sort so that would have been a huge 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 commission and just i mean going from like you know basically just just scraping whatever i could to jumping to that would have been a huge quantum leap and so i put a lot of time and energy into that deal and as we were getting you know closer to uh the final stages of ideally getting that signed and closed you know i started to almost actually get like uh like a little bit nervous and i recognized that feeling in myself before um, because even with closing other deals, sometimes I would I would almost like choke a little bit at the end or like a little bit of self sabotage because uh, you know, it was like, it was like a big deal. And I felt like, Hey, I kind of needed this to close. And because I had that attachment to the outcome, I would just think of what if it goes wrong and yada, yada, yada. And then that would kind of start to mess with my head a little bit, but I figured like no chance I'm going to let that happen here. So I did a little kind of like mental exercise for myself. And this was, this was one of the big turning points where I just kind of imagined like, okay, let's say like, you know, this does, this does close. Let's say this does go through, you know, what, what am I going to do differently? Like, what am I actually going to do differently in my life? Sure. I might go like, like, like party for a week, celebrate for a week or something like that. But after that, you know, what am I going to do? And I, you know, I thought about it really deeply and I was like, you know, like maybe I would like stop working with, you know, this client or that client. Cause it's, it's a lot of work and it's kind of some headaches, but you know, I would still keep on working with these clients and I would still keep on doing this. Cause I'm really passionate about it. And then, you know, flash forward a couple of weeks because of X, Y, Z reasons, things that were outside of our control, you know, the deal actually never ended up uh, getting closed, but I actually, you know, didn't feel any, for the first time, I didn't feel any sort of emotional attachment to that deal needing to close. And actually the fact that it didn't close, I felt perfectly fine from that. And I still felt abundant inside. And that really, really made a big difference to me. And I thought, you know what, like, why would I, why would I wait for that $300,000 deal to close to start acting like an abundant person? I should start acting like it before. So all of those things that I said I would do with the deal close, I just decided to do anyways. I dropped out of college. I, uh, I, I, I fired the clients I didn't want to work with. I doubled down on the ones that I did want to work with. I did the things that I was more passionate about, so on and so forth. And I started to enjoy things a lot better, enjoy business a lot better. And, and over time, things, you know, started to gradually get slightly better, but not, no real huge transformations yet. Flash forward a few months after um, dropping out of uh, dropping out of college, and you know, once again, I was I was in a perpetual state of uh, of of being broke, and actually, I uh, I I just had lost a a client at that time too. That was one of our our bigger clients, and I was like, dang, you know, how am I back in this position that I was just in like literally like six months or a year ago? And you know, I was thinking like. Um, I had actually, I had a roommate in college who he, uh, he'd always been working restaurant jobs as, as well. Like, like I was before I, I, I quit my restaurant job because I got enough clients to kind of replace that income. Um, but, you know, he was working restaurant jobs part-time, but he was, he was say, you know, he'd been working them about the same amount of time that I was in business and saving up money and everything like that. And so he had a good, like, you know, $25,000 or so saved up, which obviously is isn't, isn't a lot by any means, but to me, you know, and I was, I was, I was completely broke at the time. I was like, wow, like, you know, if I just, maybe if I just, like, I started thinking like, maybe if I just like saved my money instead of investing into all these things and doing all this business stuff, I would have had like, you know, $25,000 also to my name and I wouldn't be in this position. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I almost started to get like almost 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 just like the slightest slightest bit down at that point um but i had to snap myself out of it and you know i was uh completely broke at the time i had uh, a couple thousand dollars on on the credit card balance i had um like a like a like an overdraft on on, on my bank account and i had a couple thousand dollars of, of stock uh from like investing when i was like a little kid and things like that so i was my net worth was basically zero or, or very very close to zero around there um and you know i go and i'm like seeing like you know, I got to go get some like food. I open up the refrigerator. I only have like some eggs. I decide, you know, like, let's, let's go to the store, go to the store. I get some food. And as I'm kind of going and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, like, regardless of 
um, you know, what happens here, like these, like this, like next month or so, like I'm going to go all out this month. And regardless of what happens, I'm happy with, with what I decided. I'm super, super happy with everything that I invested into. I'm super, super happy with everything that I doubled down on. And I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that I acquired those skill sets and I acquired this awareness and that I tried my, my absolute best through this process. And I decided like, no matter what happens, even if I go homeless as a result, I'll be the happiest homeless person ever. Of course, that that wouldn't happen. I've got a good family and everything of that sort. But, you know, even if that were to happen, I'd be the happiest homeless person ever because at least I went all out and at least I tried everything that I could, right? And I would never stop trying so long as I could. You would find me like a homeless person in like a free library using the internet trying to start another business or something of that sort. I would always be that person to keep on trying things. So this upcoming month, I was like, you know what? Like, forget about what's inside of the bank account. The millions are inside of the mind. I learned so many lessons over the, these last years and this upcoming month, you know, I'm just going to try with everything I can just to serve people. I'm not even going to care how much money I make. I'm just going to try to serve. And when I talk to prospects, it's going to be genuinely with just a heart of a servant. How can I actually, you know, help them? How can I actually provide value to them? Will I be able to provide value to them? And instantly when I shift my focus to, to helping others from instead of of, you know, oh, like my bank account and everything like that. And I, oh, I need these deals to close and I need this money. When I shifted it to just all I care about is helping other people, that made a tremendous difference mentally because instead of being attached to these outcomes of, oh, I need this deal to close, I ended up becoming detached from it while still having full intent on closing the deal. And actually after that, that was my my first month of uh, making 10K, which, which still isn't, uh, you know, a whole lot of money, but it was, it was 10K profit. It was a really, really big deal at the time. I, I closed a good amount of clients from there. The next month I was actually able to do 15. From there, I went on to uh, do 20, um, then 25. And then uh, I actually ended up switching my model a little bit, which I'll get into a little bit later. And I did some really cool things with that. And that, that's what eventually got me into uh, the 40s, the 50s, and then uh, flash forward a little bit past there. And, and we'll kind of get into that in, in more of the actionable value stage. That's when I started to hit those, you know, 100 to 250 type of uh, months right there. But it's definitely been a crazy journey. Hopefully that, uh, you know, helps to kind of provide, you know, some guidance to others and, 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 you know, inspiration at the very least, I'm sure with everybody that we have in this group, maybe there's some things or maybe there's some similar situations that you can resonate with in your journey, whether you're more so at that stage that I was at, or you're, you're way past it. And maybe you kind of had some of the same uh, transformational things uh, going through, uh, you know, your head as well. That being said, I'm going to go ahead, uh, switch over to sharing my screen and go over some of the most, you know, actionable items and most biggest mind shifts that I really had that, that made the difference, right? And I truly believe that if you can have these things from the get-go, when, whether, you know, you're, you're just getting started in, in, in business or as a closer or you've, you've been at it for a while, the sooner you can implement these, the sooner that you'll kind of hit that exponential growth curve. Cause that's what really kind of, um, you know, made me hit my stride. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead, um, start to share my screen here. Uh, Bobby, are you able to sh uh, see my screen? Yeah, man, you're good. Awesome. Sweet. First thing I'm going to start with just some general, business value, this kind of applies to business as just kind of an umbrella topic. Then I'm going to get into some things specifically with sales and some things specifically with marketing. These are some of the biggest things that I really learned. These are some of the most helpful things. I got these from a variety of different mentors that I, that I invested in when I was working my jobs, running my agencies and always reinvesting from, you know, coaches like Sam Ovens, Jeremy Haynes, uh, you know, Ty Lopez back in the day with the SMMA. I mean, all different types of coaches out there. Uh, one of the most important, and this one is, is super, super, basic and foundational, but it's something that I still have to ask myself every single day. And it has to do with gaining massive, massive clarity. I call it really the North Star. I think Sam Ovens also calls it the North Star. And it's really understanding what is it exactly that you really want, right? Like almost everybody wants to be rich. Oh, I want to make a lot of money. I want to be rich. But how much exactly do you want to make? And not only how much do you want to make, how do you want to make it? Who do you want to make it with? You know, what do you want your, your lifestyle to look like as you're, as you're making this money? Do you want to be like walking into an office every single day with a suit? Do you want to have more flexibility and be able to travel, right? And run it more online, so on and so forth. But gaining that crystal clear clarity on exactly everything that you want to the detail is going to be super, super important. I'll give you an example of this. When I first started out at 
in business, you know, I thought I wanted to make millions of dollars, right? Of course I did, right? Who wouldn't? But at the end of the day, what I what I really wanted, and, and this is one of the things that took me a lot longer to hit my, my stride was, I just wanted to make enough money to be able to quit my restaurant job, right? And because that was my focus, um, instead of going for the millions right away, I, I ended up doing things that might make me, you know, an extra couple thousand dollars a month or a few thousand dollars a month. And that was perfectly fine. And it was really an amazing experience. But of course, I had to end up shifting a lot of things there because running a more lower ticket retainer agency, I found it was very, very d difficult to scale $250 a month, $500 a month, $1,000 a month uh, retainers when you're having to do the sales, the marketing, deliver on the back end and, and everything in between, right? Whereas if I really kind of sat down and focused and I was like, no, you know, this is where I want to go, then I could have really built the business from the beginning in a way that would support that level of growth instead of having to go through many, many iterations of, of different businesses to eventually get there, right? So gaining massive clarity, definitely number one, become rich internally first, right? This was one of that big turning points that I was talking about, uh, you know, where the millions are in the mind, usually before they're, they're in the bank account. So uh, everybody here, I want everybody here to do everything they can to feel like a millionaire or billionaire every single day. Like what kind of beliefs and thoughts and attitudes would you have if you were already a millionaire or billionaire every single day? Imagine yourself just like already in that position. And what would you think? What kind of attitudes would you have? One big limiting belief or not, I don't even know if I would call it a limiting belief, but I used to say things that back in the day, like my vocabulary used to say things like, oh, like a thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Oh, ten thousand dollars. That's that's a lot of money. Um, a hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Oh, a million dollars. I I can't afford that. You know, that's kind of what my mind was thinking before. One of the best things I learned was switch that to that's not a lot of money and start looking at big and huge sums of money as very small amounts of money, right? And whatever you can do to kind of, you know, truncate it down to make it look like it's a small amount of money, that's going to serve you very, very well. Even though I don't have uh, a billion dollars or anything close to it, I, I truly believe internally that a billion dollars is, is not a lot of money. A billion dollars is just flying through us like this, just electronically as we speak, just billions of dollars of all different types of deals happening. Uh, every single minute that we exist, right? So um, that being said, become rich internally first, right? Third thing, really, and this is kind of uh, one of the number one rules of business that I believe, I mean, in addition to just providing, you know, massive value to people and really caring about, uh, you know, the customer on the other side of the phone or at the other side of the checkout page is, is focus, right? Pick a model that works, you know, in this case, I know a high ticket closing is a phenomenal model, but pick a model that works, focus on that and avoid shiny object syndrome. That was a big sticking point for me. Uh, it was very difficult for me to avoid shiny object syndrome with all the different things that were out there. But if I had just picked one thing and really focused on it from the beginning and eliminated all the other noise, then I would have been able to get to where I am much, much, much quicker, right? So you want to pick a model that works. Almost almost any business model can get you to um, you know millions of dollars a year, right? So just pick one uh, that works. Pick one that you like that that you know falls in line with your north star and what which you really like and then dedicate yourself fully to it and then avoid shiny object syndrome you know close everything out of there environment partners and allies is huge i used to think that i could do everything myself but uh really it was my environment my partners and my allies were really probably one of the biggest turning points for me. Um, even though after that last story, I told you I became much, much better at sales, kind of having that heart of a servant. It wasn't until actually probably about a year or a year and a half later when I was working on um, scaling an, an offer. And it was actually the first two comic club award that uh, that I won. I was working on scaling an offer uh, with a couple of, of, of friends and business partners and, and allies of mine. And um, the closer that we had on that offer, uh, you know, I flew out to Miami. We, we were all in the same Airbnb. I was, I was working on a lot of the marketing, the Facebook ads, the systems on the back end. Uh, but while I was working on those things, I would, I would hear that closer closing the deals in the background. And that was the number one thing that actually leveled up my sales skills was the proximity to that closer. Because at the end of the day, um, I, I still, even at that point, still had some limiting beliefs around closing. Like, for example, like, oh, if a prospect says X, Y, Z objection, oh, I don't want to be, you know, too pushy or, or make it seem like weird or this or that. So I'll just kind of, you know, let them get off or, or oh, if they want me to, oh, I'll just kind of listen to whatever they say. Oh, send you a proposal or whatever it might be. Right. 
Um, but when I heard this closer, you know, handle objections or the way that he would, you know, talk to prospects when I was in just in that proximity in a matter of just a day or two of listening to that, I was actually able to replicate what he was doing. I was able to adopt the same tonality. I was able to adopt the same posture and the same confidence that he had handling objections. And that was one of the biggest things I would have taken probably months and months of practice to overcome those things if it wasn't for that proximity. And that's why it's super, super powerful that you guys have the community that you do and the proximity that other, you know, really talented closers in here. Cause that was definitely one of the biggest things uh, for me as well. And, and now in terms of environment partners, and allies. I've got an amazing environment, amazing circle. It didn't start off that way. Um, you know, first like four, four or five years in business, I was kind of doing it all alone. But now, I, now after going to events, now after being in communities, like, you know, like, uh, like the community that Mike Barron has set up here, um, I was able to meet and connect with really great other individuals, some of which were on my level, some were, you know, catching up to my level and, and some were way, way, way ahead. And now we're all really, really good friends. We mastermind together. We get Airbnbs together. And uh, we're always, 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 you know, helping each other and improving our businesses and improving our skills together. And that makes a huge difference when I see somebody who is, you know, 10 times ahead of where I am, but I have that proximity to them and I'm able to talk to them that there, there's literally nothing else like it as far as the quickest way to essentially like get rich quick, if you will. Next thing I'll say is irrational positivity, magnetize your mind. Uh, literally there, there, there should, uh, as much as you can eliminate all negativity from, from your system, from your speech, from your thoughts, from your attitude, everything, and just have infinite positivity. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. It was something I really, really overlooked back in the day. Um, but actually, you know, when speaking about the environment and the partners and allies, you know, some of these people in, in my circle, we were staying at a, at an Airbnb together in, in Florida and, and one of their friends from, from childhood actually was, was coming to visit. And I didn't know this at the time, but he was actually like completely broke, like only, only $500 uh, to his name. And, uh, you know, he borrowed that $500 from our friend and was going to pay it back and everything of that sort. Um, but this guy, he was just the most positive person I had ever met before in my life. Like, I mean, this guy, you could not stop his positivity, no matter what he would never get down, no matter what would be thrown at him no matter how bad the situation he'd always be like oh i'm like so blessed this is gonna be the best day of my life i'm so excited oh i'm gonna make billions of dollars i can't wait and it was such an infectious positivity that i knew i was like wow this guy one day he is gonna be a billionaire i just didn't know how quickly he was actually gonna go from from broke to um now he's he's he's, he's quite wealthy and quite up there he's definitely surpassed me and a lot of uh and a lot of our friends and he did it in a much shorter amount of time and the one thing that i can I can really attribute that to it wasn't his his necessarily his skills or his wits or his business acumen or experience it was just honestly sheer irrational positivity and just never 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 getting down and just completely manifesting what it was he wants best book recommendations i can give for this uh for the general section uh power versus force by david hawkins really phenomenal book probably one of, probably my number one or number two favorite book of all time a happy pocket full of money. That's very much like Think and Grow Rich, which I also love. Happy pocket full of money is just a little bit shorter, um, really kind of hammers in a lot of the same concepts of Think and Grow Rich. It also pairs it with a lot of research now inside of uh, quantum physics and quantum mechanics to kind of show how a lot of these manifestation phenomenons actually work. Uh, and greatest salesman in, a, in the world. I think that's a phenomenal one for uh, for positivity and getting hyped every single day um, to go and uh, and go help prospects, right? Sales. Um, moving on to the sales side of things, uh, some of the biggest lessons that I've learned here, I'm sure a lot of you already uh, know these, so definitely don't want to preach to the choir too much. Uh, but best way to convince people I've found is to let them convince themselves, right? Like uh, back in the day, I used to kind of be like that... Uh, uh, you know, that that refrigerator salesman that you'd see at like the, the mall. Oh, it's got XYZ feature. This bad boy can do yada, yada, yada. It's the best thing since sliced bread. You know, that's all trying to convince people, right? And uh, I found if you try to convince people, all those things, they know you're a salesperson. It, it almost can kind of like push them away. But instead, if you can if you can really get them to come to their own conclusions that what you have to offer is the best thing for them, it's a much, much easier sale. So instead of what well, my language started changing, instead of being like, yeah, so, you know, this sounds like it, this is a really amazing fit. We can definitely help you out a lot here. I started to change that to like, um, <clears throat> so, you know, based on, based on everything that we, that, that we went over here, do you, do you feel like this, this might be a potential good solution for you? 
and then just you know wait for them to respond oh yeah you know i think it could be a, a good solution i'm like really why why do you think that is though you know and then get them to kind of open up get them to kind of you know start give them the room to kind of think their own thoughts and come to their own conclusions right and of course um it's a lot more than just that you know it's kind of the whole sales process uh revolving uh revolving around that concept and and doing it in a logical way where they get the right beliefs you know at every single step of the process and they come to their own conclusions at every single step of the process that this makes sense and it's a good fit for them if it is a good fit for them at the end of the day and if it's not then you know that's totally uh fine as well uh eliminate limiting beliefs um <clears throat> you know some of mine that i had to overcome with sales were you know uh especially you know when i when i was a bit younger was i'd be talking most of my prospects would be a lot older than me they'd have a lot more uh business experience than i did a lot more years under their belt a lot more you know money under their uh, in their bank accounts and everything of that sort and so uh i almost felt a little bit like you know like who am i like this young guy just like you know it's tell somebody like, oh, like yada, 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 you should do this because of X, Y, V or Z or this or that, right? Uh, so those are some of the limiting beliefs that I definitely had to, to overcome, right? Definitely eliminate all those as possible. The best way that I found to do so is, um, you know, A, uh, you know, approach things with like a heart of a servant. What you're doing as salespeople is you're genuinely, genuinely helping people by getting them to come to their own conclusions that what you have to offer is the right fit for them if it is at the end of the day. And your job as the salesperson is to help them come to their those conclusions so that they can have the results and the transformations that they're seeking, right? So that to me, that was definitely a big thing. Uh, another big thing inside of sales, as, as you all probably know, you know, the better the offer, uh, the easier it is to, to sell, right? So as closers, as you go out and you're looking for, you know, the best offer to possibly promote, you know, try to find the ones with the best track records, the best results, the ones that you'll feel the best selling, because of course, the better, the, the better the offer is, of course, that's just going to make it easier for you to sell at the end of the day. Uh, apply a rational positivity to sales. That doesn't necessarily mean like, um, you know, always be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, rainbows and sunshine with your prospects and everything of that sort and, uh, and super, super excited, you know, and everything like that, you know, different salespeople have different styles. I've met really great closers that are very enthusiastic and excited over the phone or over the zoom call. And then I have really, really amazing closers on my team that are very, very calm, you know, and they're, they're, they're very, um, you know, professional and you won't see them like, you know, jumping out of the gym with like excitement and things like that with the prospect, right? They'll be like very well mannered, very well uh, tonality, very professional, kind of like very, you know, doctor type of tonality and things of that nature. So they're not necessarily, you know, jumping out of the gym with excitement and things of that nature. But the way that we apply rational positivity to sales is regardless of whether or not it, it is a it is a day that you close zero deals or you close like five deals in a day, it still should be best day ever. Like this is going to be the best day of my life. I am so blessed to be talking to these prospects today. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to talk to that prospect. Even if it's a, even if it's a, 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 a bad prospect or looks like a bad application, like, oh, I'm so excited to practice my craft here. I'm so excited to see if I might be able to come up with a solution that might possibly work for them, even though they're in a tricky financial situation right now. So on and so forth. Right. Uh, so inside of our sales team, like actually one of, one of the biggest things that we did in just the last last few months that have, you know, the last seven months of uh, We Clone You have just been month over month uh, consecutive growth. But one, one of the biggest things in the last couple months is I actually had our, uh, our head closer on the We Clone You offer come out and hang out with us. And he actually hung out with the irrational positivity guy that I was talking about because we're all really good friends now. And uh, that instantly, I mean, just like his closing just went to the next level like that. And he's still, you know, his, his approach is very like calm, well-mannered. He doesn't get too excited on the sales calls or anything like that. But now, regardless of whether a call goes good or bad, he closes zero deals. He closes a ton of deals in a day. His attitude is always a 10 out of 10. Always very, very positive. Always excited for the next day. Always excited to improve day after day. A heart of a servant, right? We already went over that. And that really helps to um, <clears throat> get to attain what what uh, what uh, is often called like called like freedom from outcome um but but full intent and i believe that you know you want to have full intent on closing the deal and helping the prospect so you want to be 100% focused like that is the goal that is your intent but at the same time zero attachment to the outcome so if they don't end up closing and you did everything you could your emotions do not fluctuate 
whatsoever, if they whether they close or not. Uh, and that'll really, really help out on um, on the sales calls as well. Uh, lastly, on the sales side, you know, I've found that being the customer is one of the best ways to get better at sales. Uh, I had a big transformation personally when I invested into my first high ticket coaching program. And it was a lot more than I was expecting to invest on that call. Um, and I was not expecting to make a decision on that call. I was not expecting to sign up on that call or, or anything of that sort. But um, I did, you know, and it was a great transformation that I got. But uh, one of the biggest things that I got out of that, in addition to the program itself that I purchased, was really being the customer on the other side of that phone and and seeing how that 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 sales how that closer the questions that he would ask me how i would feel with every single question that he would ask me the different emotions that would arise inside of me that eventually got me to the end where i was excited to make the the investment. Whereas before I would have never even imagined before I hopped on that call, making that investment. So sometimes being the customer and being on the other side is one of the best ways uh, to get better at sales. Whenever I'm swiping my card, whenever I'm spending money on anything, I'm always thinking, you know, how did that business get my money? You know, what were the different emotions that I felt or, you know, what was, what was the reason that I spent that money? And I'm always trying to reverse engineer that psychology behind it. Cause that really, really helps then when you're on the other side and you're, you're the closer. Uh, Bobby, how are we doing on time? Should I get into uh, marketing or should we do some uh, Q and A's? Uh, you got a, You got a couple minutes to cover marketing and then we can jump on some Q and A's. Beautiful. Sounds good. Marketing, I'll just fly through really, really quickly. Um, better the offer, easier to market, I found, kind of like uh, with, with sales. I'm going to give a quick overview of, of market sophistication. Actually, this comes from uh, one of the best books that I've read on marketing called Breakthrough Advertising. Highly, highly recommend it for anybody who's uh, interested in marketing. And, and marketing and sales can be very, very similar psychologies at the end of the day. So definitely can also help with the sales game. Actually, this was part of the reason for my inspiration calling this presentation. Um, how to get rich quick, right? Even though we all know, hey, there's there's really no such thing as like a get rich quick, quick, right? Uh, but that being said, really, um, market sophistication being one of one of the main things that I learned out of this book back in back in the day, like let's go back maybe like like a hundred years ago or so, right? Um, and this was all when it was all print marketing and it was all uh, mm -hmm. direct mail and things of that nature. Um, and people weren't really, you know, the niche of how to get rich wasn't really fully developed yet. It was just in its in its infancy of, of blowing back up again. Back then, people used to just be able to say how to get rich quick. That would be their headline and they would make millions of dollars. The first person who came out with the how to get rich, uh, how to get rich headline made millions of dollars. But after years and years and years of hammering that, it became saturated in the how to get rich headline stopped working. So what did what did marketers start to do after that? They get, go on to the next level of market sophistication. And they're like, okay, now it's how to get rich quick, you know, like how to get rich work. So if we say how to get rich quick, that's got to get some more customers. So the person who came up with how to get rich quick ended up becoming very rich as well, right? How to get rich quick. They rode that way for a while. Market sophistication rode. They saturated the market. How to get rich quick stopped working, right? Then they got even more outrageous. How to get rich uh, in a week, how to get rich in a month, you know, all those different sorts of things, like, like making um, even more outrageous claims. And the people who started making those started making a lot of money, right? Then uh, the market got more sophisticated and those outrageous claims stopped working. You could no longer say how to get rich quick, how to get rich in a week, yada, 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 because it, all everybody's claims just got so outrageous that the market you know, level of sophistication kind of rose. So then what started working after that is they pivoted back to how to get rich slow. And now how to get rich slow ended up making uh, making millionaires because uh, everybody was so used to hearing, oh, how to get rich quick, how to get rich quick. They kind of stopped believing in it, yada, yada, yada. But then that guy who was like, oh, forget getting rich quick. Here's how you get rich slow. He ended up really making a lot of money from that, right? So markets, they go through different levels of sophistication, depending on how saturated that niche is and their level of awareness. And at each different level of sophistication, it requires uh, different kind of strategies and tactics, kind of like how back in the, uh, back with high ticket closing, right? Uh, you could probably like like early high ticket closing over the phone or over the Zoom could have probably been a lot higher pressure than it is these days. Um, but past a certain point, you know, market sophistication and consumer sophistication kind of caught up. So a lot of those more higher pressure tactics that worked back in the day stopped working as well, right? And then it became a lot more finesse and a lot more style 
to it, right? And and really mastering the tonality and and you know now we get to things where uh, sometimes you know now a lot of, sometimes sales advice is hey like don't don't like like oversell it to the point where it's unbelievable. Like keep things within the the range of of belief, keep things realistic for the prospect. You know, get them to come to their own conclusion. And so sales also evolved along with the trend of market sophistication. So I uh, just wanted to go over that as well. Uh, you know, join the co uh, conversation that's already in your prospect's head. You know, that's something that um uh, that we cover that we cover a lot. But that being said, uh, best book recommendation: Breakthrough Advertising. Uh, for anybody on this call, if you want to connect, if you have more questions, at Baki at B A K I on Instagram, feel free to shoot me a message and. Uh, that being said, once again, thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Uh, I guess we'll get into some Q and A's. Yeah. Wow. Sammy, that was, uh, whoo. I don't, I don't, everybody else better have some takeaways because I definitely have some and, and we'll cover those later, but let's get into these Q and A's. Matt, what you got, man? Uh, thank you, uh, Sammy. I just want to, uh, add, what was the name of that book? Breakthrough what? Uh, breakthrough advertising. It's uh, okay. by a guy named uh, Eugene Schwartz. He was a legendary uh, advertiser and copywriter back in the day. And um, it's hailed as one of the best like books on advertising I've ever written. Definitely the best one I've ever read. Um, they used to be super limited edition. They, the books used to cost like $500 because you can only get them used. And they were so coveted by marketers that they were very hard to find. Um, but now you can get them, I think, for like a hundred bucks online because um, this this guy actually, he, he broke a deal uh, with the widow of the of Eugene Schwartz and, and they, they now have it back in print, which is really, so now it's much easier to get. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good one. Awesome. Uh, Justin, what you got, man? Yes, sir. So just a quick question, Sam. Um, you mentioned uh, how to get rich quick, right? So we're getting right to it, right? We're, we're just cutting right to the bottom line. And that's by automation. That's by technology, right? Um, also, I noticed a lot of people are using click funnels, landing pages, stuff like that. Facebook ads, Google ads, right? That's the meat and the potato. So how are you um, positioning yourself to take advantage of that technology when it comes to automation and so forth like that to uh, increase the bottom line for a business? Great question. Yes. And um, where that really kind of came from and, and we clone you and, and automations for businesses and, and, you know, now even incorporating some AI to make them run more efficiently, it really came from uh, one of the best questions I, I, you know, was ever asked. Well, I went to this, you know, really high ticket mastermind is about $30,000 a year. And this was when I was uh, about at the, the 50k a month range. And, uh, you know, I, I asked them, I was like, hey, you know, I'm at 50 right now. Uh, the goal was to kind of get to 100. And, uh, you know, they, they told me they were basically like, hey, you know, rather than asking yourself, you know, how do I go from uh, $50,000 a month to $100,000 a month right now? How do I ask yourself instead, how do I make it so that I can continue to make $50,000 a month as much on autopilot as possible without my involvement? Because if I can do it without my involvement, it's going to be way easier for me to get to 100 than just, you know, keep on adding more things to my plate and grinding harder and harder and harder, right? Um, so really a lot of different automations that we use. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a whole different list. Actually, if, if you want, Justin, shoot me a message on Instagram. I'll send over uh, a bunch of free resources to you. We have an ultimate systems checklist that kind of breaks it all down. Uh, but we've uh, we've systematized our business uh, to the bits as much as possible to the point where everything from the marketing side, when you know a lead opts in, all of the Zapier integrations that automatically bring it to the CRM, notify the sales team. If they um, don't book a call, they're having a setter reach out. If they uh, do book a call, but maybe they cancel or no show, we're having a setter reach out for that, right? Yeah. To when it comes time to actually process the payment, payment gets processed, agreement gets sent out automatically. When they complete the agreement, they're automatically getting a welcome email. That's all done, you know, through Zapier integrations. It's automatically updating our CRM. It's automatically updating our Facebook custom audiences for advertising purposes and our email list. Uh, so wow. that we know they're a client now and everything of that sort. And that's all happening automatically. Then it's adding them to a client success tracking spreadsheet. Uh, we have about five virtual assistants on the client success team right now that do 
a really phenomenal job. And so they're updating that tracking sheet every single day. That way at a glance, I can just kind of take a look. Um, we do most of our team communication on Slack because it integrates very well with Zapier. So that way, uh, whenever, whether it's a lead coming in, an agreement got signed, um, you know, a call got canceled or whatever it might be, those notifications are all automatically going into Slack. Um, and then at the end of each day, we're having every member on our team send in end of day reports, just basically going over, Hey, here's what I did today. Here was, here was the outcome of that. Um, you know, here's what I think could be done more efficiently. And they take about 15 minutes of thinking time to see what they think could be improved, whether themselves or inside of the business. Um, from there also now we've started leveraging a lot of artificial intelligence for everything from, you know, content creation, video editing, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll definitely shoot over that, uh, ultimate systems checklist to you as well. I think What's that that'll the best email to reach you, sir. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, sure. So you can, uh, I'll put it in the chat too. So for Instagram, it's at B-A-K-I, but for, uh, email, um, let me see if I can, I might not be able to put in the chat, but it's Sammy, S-A-M-I at weclonyou.com. Um, your, your net worth is your net worth. Or your net worth That's is right. your net worth. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time, sir. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Awesome. Right. Alexis, what do, you, what do you got? I know you had a question. Yeah, quick question. Um, first off, thank you, Sammy, for um, spending time talking to us today. Um, pretty simple. Um, when you first started to, like, kind of, first started to see some real money um and you had those days where you were feeling like this isn't real and I don't know if I deserve this and I don't know if I'm cut out for this and I don't know if I can keep up with this and you kind of hit that like imposter syndrome type of deal how did you break through that like what were um some main things that really got you through that to keep going up it's a it's a great question I think um for me, I feel like I probably had had more imposter syndrome before I started having having success. I feel like that was one of the limiting beliefs I almost had to overcome in order to kind of get to uh, that next level. Um, I'd say when it started, when it started coming in and things started becoming more abundant, you know, one one of the first things that I did was uh, I actually started doing a really good job of also saving up and, and investing my money. And that was something I also got from uh, Sam Ovens. And one of the most important things that, that he laid out, which was that um, when you start to kind of make that money, make sure to try to set aside, you know, at least six months to 12 months of cash reserves, because if you at least have that set aside, it's going to make you a lot more emotionally stable as you go through business or as you go through closing and a lot less attached to outcomes. And then you can also think longer term and, uh, and what you really want to do. But uh, in regards specifically to, uh, to imposter syndrome, I think everybody, you know, just has to start somewhere. And, and so long as you're, you're, you're genuinely uh, intending and doing everything that you can to, you know, do your part and, and deliver results, you know, when, when you can, then um, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about imposter syndrome. I think it's something that, you know, kind of everybody at some point has to deal with, but I guess for you yourself, are you kind of feeling that like a little bit right now? And if so, where do you think that that might be coming from possibly? Um. Well, the kind of money that I'm that I've set a goal to start making. I've never seen that kind of money before. So I'm really like um, putting a lot, like really taking a huge uh, leap of faith and trying to completely change my entire lifestyle. Um, so I see like everything's going really well for me right now. And like the training's great. And like I'm getting in these, um, these rooms with like great people and um, really knowledgeable friends and stuff like that. So I see it's going up and I'm just trying to kind of get ahead of the game and think like, I'm like, if there's times where I'm like, I don't know if I can keep up with this, like just talking to you, like how, how would you have done that? But that's great advice. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. And I, I agree with you. I think getting, in those rooms connecting with those people is definitely going to help that, that'll probably be the quickest way if you're surrounded by by those people that are kind of already on that level that that's automatically going to rub off on you and then the second thing i'd say is just you know with the money just think about you know what what people do with money oftentimes like sure everybody they want to they want to take care of the first they need to kind of take care of themselves right it's kind of like when you're on the airplane they're like hey first put on your oxygen mask before you put somebody else's on you know you have to be able to first like 
eat and be really, really comfortable yourself and feel financially secure before you go on and really help others. But most people are, are, are good people at, at hearts, I believe, or at least a lot of people. Right. And so, um, once you kind of start, you know, making that, like, just think about like, you know, you're going to be able to help your family. You're going to be able to help your friends and you're going to be super abundant with it. Money always goes around, no matter what you're doing, it always goes around. Whether you have it sitting in a bank account that that money is, is earning interest. The bank is lending it out. It just became somebody's, you know, new home. Uh, or if you're spending the money on, on lavish things, whether it's, uh, expensive dinners or whatever it might be, you know, that money is going to other businesses and then that's going into other people's pockets. Then they're sharing it. Right. And so that's kind of the beautiful thing about, um, the economy. If, uh, and I've had some people like, uh, that, that have brought the same thing to me where they're like, you know, I just kind of feel like, like battle almost making all this money because where I, I come from, like, like my family back in this country or over there, you know, they, they'll, ne they never see this kind of money, you know, in their lives. And I'm like, you know, never feel bad about making money because at the end of the day, you making money can only help other people. And especially if you're making it, then that's the best thing that you can really do for your family and friends uh, in order to be able to support them uh, as well. Right. And whether you have that money sitting in a bank account the bank is lending it out. It's turning into other people's homes. It's still participating in the economy or if you're spending it on lavish things, that money's still going around. It's supporting uh, restaurant workers and, and restaurants and all different kinds of things, right? Um, so hopefully that helps. I'm not, I'm not sure if that answers the, the question perfectly. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. 100%. Awesome. Thanks, thanks. So we got, we got time for one more question. Jose, what you got, man? Hey, Sammy, nice to meet you, man. Uh, quick Likewise. question. So, um, did you have any bad habits coming up on your entrepreneur journey? And if so, if so, like how'd you get rid of those habits, you know? Uh, it's a good question. I'd say uh, bad habits for me. Um, definitely. I mean, like, uh, like, like smoking, I've, I've smoked probably like since early day, uh, not early days, I, later on, later on in high school. So that's definitely probably not, not the greatest habit. It's one I've kind of had to limit as much as, po uh, as much as possible, just, you know, for productivity purposes and things of that nature. Um, other bad habits might've been just like, uh, surrounding myself with, with the wrong people, which is, it isn't a bad thing. Uh, I think everything kind of had its time and place in, inside of the journey. Um, and they weren't the wrong people to be surrounding myself with. It's just, they weren't necessarily in line with where I was trying to really go. Right. Um, other bad habits. I'm trying to think if I might've had any, I think the other one would probably just be, uh, repeating things that didn't work. Right. That'd probably be my biggest one is I just tried something like the definition of insanity being, you know, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I definitely hung on too long to certain tactics that I probably should have tried something else and tried to adapt the strategy or talk to somebody and get, get feedback on it. Uh, instead of just <clears throat> continuing to bang my, my head against a wall, essentially. Um, I'm not sure exactly what bad habits that that you might have in mind too, but you know, a funny thing kind of on on that on that smoking front was uh, I've met all kinds of uh, entrepreneurs and successful people with all different kinds of habits, and uh, I remember when I uh, like actually first flew out to uh, Miami to. Uh, uh, like, you know, meet with, uh, you know, some of my new business partners and they were the ones we went on to win the first, uh, two comic club award with, and they were making way more money than I was at the time. And I was thinking, oh, these are like high level business people. You know, if they, if they see me like, like vaping or something like that, like they're, they're not going to mess with it. Right. Uh, and then I get there to Florida and I leave, I leave my vape at, at home and then I get there. And then um, next thing I see is they're taking out their vapes and hitting them. And I'm like, oh, can, can I hit that? <laughs> you know? So like, uh, uh, definitely. I mean, I don't recommend it. It's not a good habit what, whatsoever, you know, and definitely if you can cut it out, it, you'll, you'll make more money and you'll be more successful without it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've seen people with, with some bad habits still be able to pull off some pretty cool things. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. One thing is uh, procrastination for me. Mm, you know, I see. On, yeah, procrastination for me is really a bad issue. I see. I see it. My, my favorite quote for that is by Marcus Aurelius is um, to begin is half the work let half still remain once more begin that and you will have finished. Right. So don't even like, if you're having trouble getting started on something, don't worry about finishing it. Just say, okay, I'm just going to get started on it. And then like, sometimes that just kind of helps get the ball rolling. Even if it's the smallest action that you're taking to just kind of get it started. Other thing I, I really like is for me, me personally is like, um, I used to, uh, like wake up in the morning and I, and I would, I would work out and I would do like a whole health routine in the morning. Um, 
but I found that then after complete, at least me personally, everybody's different. Me personally, after that, I would have a harder time than doing the most important things in my business because I would have already used a lot of willpower um, at the gym and on health. So now like when I wake up, I try to do the most important things in business first, since that's my priority. And then later on in the day, then I'll go to the gym and I'll do the other things. Um, so I definitely in the morning, that's when you have the most willpower, jump into the most important tasks there and that'll help too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been working on it. So I've been getting a little bit better, but yeah, I'll give that a try and see if that works. Awesome. I appreciate it, Sammy. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, Jose. Awesome. Sammy, this was such a pleasure. Uh, we're, we're so, so glad to, uh, to have you on with us. Um, so, so now guys, uh, everything is kind of, kind of finished up. So, you know, one, let's give, let's give Sammy a round of applause. Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for sharing your wisdom. And, uh, and thank you for, for giving these guys everything you have, man. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for uh, taking the time to watch this today. Hope it was able to add some value. And uh, thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Mike Barron, for having me on. And uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to connect.